freaking first cut. Golly! Welcome to the First Cut Podcast. I'm Rick Gaiman, and this is your mega preview pod for this week's Open Championship. Joining me to break it all down, Patrick McDonald is here. Patrick, good day. The British Open. I could not be more excited. I'm I'm wearing a sweater to try to assimilate myself to the climate, even nice. though it's like 300 degrees outside here in Charleston. But over there, it's cold, wet, rainy. Mm. Uh, so trying to trying to get in the zone. Perfect. You're a, Br- you're a British Open boy. British Open not, boy. Absolutely. Not Open Championship. I mean, it, it worked for Colin Morikawa. It can work for me. That's true. Uh, that right there is Kyle Porter. KP, that sounds like perfect conditions for an Open Championship. Uh, what does? Wet, rainy. What else? There was one other. What did you say, Patrick? It's wet. It's rainy. It's nasty. Windy. Windy. Oh, yeah. It it just looks like an open. You know, I, I got I was able to go over there last year for St. Andrews, which was which was amazing. But it wasn't it wasn't a true. I see. I go open championship, Patrick. But I'm I, I, I thought the best take on this. Uh, who was it? Zephyr Melton, I think, for golf dot com said, if you actually care about this, like you're a clown. Like if you care either way, which I think is a hilarious take, Uh, but I didn't get the, I didn't get the open experience, Rick. It was sunny. It was like warm. It was not the, and we actually, this is, this is one of my takes coming into the week. We haven't really gotten kind of those open conditions since 2019 when, when Shane Lowry won, because Morikawa was pretty calm. Uh, Obviously last year was like, perfect weather all four days basically uh, at least for for scotland so i'm i'm hoping for more of what patrick was talking about throughout the week well if there is some of that patrick it will be done at royal liverpool the 151st open championship this ain't no saint andrews no hundred yard wide fairways off the first tee. You're going to have to be pretty sharp around this place. The 17th hole, a brand new par three will certainly be a big feature that you'll see throughout the week. But uh, how do you, how do you look at this challenge of golf course for the best players in the world? It's no St. Andrews. It's no Los Angeles country club. Oh. It's a real test of golf. Finally. Uh, Finally, finally, finally. 2019 we haven't had a real test since oak hill uh when it comes to professional golf so it's it's been a while for these guys i'm excited to see how they take to it uh if, if they can get to the test but I, i'm pretty sure they're gonna kind of dismantle this place it looks really green out there it's rained a ton out there the last two opens that were held here what was tiger 14 under rory was 17 under well, they've changed par. It's it's a it, we're gonna get all kinds of just fake statistics this week that but don't mean anything. I'm thinking around that 17 under range, just given how green it is out there. But it, is that old 17 under or new 17 under? Like 271 current, or 267? Current current 17 under with the okay. uh, the the tenth is now par four, played as a par five. Uh, 17 is obviously the new hole. I think a lot of players are differing in their opinions of it cameron smith liked it brooks kepka liked it matt fitzpatrick wasn't that big of a fan then again matt fitzpatrick said he's just hoping to like finish inside the top 30 this week because yeah that was off experience that was weird (laughs) bad um way to take yourself out of the tournament before it even started just maddie boy come on um but i i love the thought of a short par three that makes you think late in a golf tournament and one shot could be heroic and one shot could be disastrous. And it's not to the extent of TPC Sawgrass where if you miss that green, you're absolutely boned. You're not going to win that golf tournament most likely, but here you missed a green. You can still get up and down and save par and keep yourself in it, but you can also make a double bogey. So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for that. I think the I think the problem with it, Patrick, is that it's only going to play the way you're describing if it's windy, right? I think otherwise it's going to. I mean, sure, you, even if it's not windy, you're going to see somebody make a double, but it really could affect the tournament if it's super windy there, and you have six guys going through that are within one or two of the lead as they go through. That that to me is is fascinating, Rick. 
I've been dying to ask you this all week because I've been reading your stuff. I've been listening, like just I've, I've been part of my preparation for the tournament is like consuming your content. Oh, thank you. Yes. Newsletter, Rick Runge, all, all the, all the different stuff. And you've been really big and this was corroborated by uh, Michael Kim's tweets over the last few days. You've been really big on how important driver is throughout the week at this tournament. And I'm curious, you, you've kind of hinted at why, but I just, I want to hear you sort of lay out why you think that as we, as we, uh, as play starts on Thursday. Yeah. So admittedly, I've, um, I, I, I believe that off the tee is critical and I've almost kind of not switched, but, um, transitioned from saying driver is important to saying off the tee is important. And the reason okay. that, the reason that I've done that is there was a really good thing um, on the range with Minwoo Lee. Now Minwoo is actually quite long, so this this might not apply to a lot of the golfers. He's the so long. Yeah. So he said when he played the front nine today, he hit one driver, and he was basically just taking two iron everywhere. Um, now that might be a strategy decision, <clears throat> and it also might be the fact that he is kind of longer than most other guys. But I still think that off the tee is going to be so important because uh, for a couple of reasons, um, a lot of the trouble, like what are hazards and what are penalties at this golf course? Uh, pot bunkers are, those are very much in that 280 to 300 yard range on every single hole. The internal OB that we're seeing so much of that's obviously a full shot. The gorse, if those bushes where if your ball goes in it, you will not find it. That is like a full stroke penalty. So the, the penalties for misses along with the rough, the rough might be a half shot penalty, but the other things that we've discussed are like a full shot or more penalty. And the fairways themselves, I mean, are some of them are 18 yards wide. Like the widest ones, like 30 yards. wide. I mean, they're very, very narrow. And then you throw wind into play. So I just think that there's going to be a real opportunity to separate yourself off the tee if you are not making big numbers, if you can keep it in play, if you're being strategic, it seems like Minwoo's strategy is lay it back when danger comes into play and hit a lot of two irons. But I just think that that's a place where you can make a lot of big numbers and separate yourself. Yeah, that's it's super interesting. I, I love hearing you sort of break that down and talk about that. It, it seems like a place... Patrick, that is a big ballpark, but not necessarily a wide ballpark, if that makes sense. Like it's it's expansive as a as like the property. It's it it seems like I've not been over there. I'm not over there right now, but it it um it seems naturally it is some of the some of the majors we go to, especially US opens, they're unnaturally narrow. This one seems naturally narrow and small compared to some of the other other uh, major championship venues. And very flat. And I, I think to what Rick said, in 2014, you had two of the best drivers of the golf ball to ever play the game, Sergio Garcia and Roy yeah. McIlroy go one, two. And Ricky was about, really good, too. And we talked about on Sunday, kind of players championship. That's a golf course, TPC Sawgrass, where it's really uncomfortable off the tee and yeah. really tight at some points as well. So. Uh, I, I totally agree with Rick. I, you got to put the ball in play here. Uh, I, I thought I, I'm not sure who had the picture where they uh, photoshopped the pond where the internal out of bounds was. On, I saw uh, that. Who, who was that? Uh, it won the week I, for me on Twitter. I, I can't remember. But, you, but another name to bring up TPC Sawgrass is is Minwoo, right? Yeah, Fleetwood has played well at TPC Sawgrass. So I, I, I think a lot of the na it, that it's such an interesting comp because I don't know that the courses are necessarily. I don't know. I don't know that they're similar uh, per se, but I don't know that you would look at each one of them and say like, "Oh, these are pretty much the same course," right? But in terms of this, the strategy of it, it does kind of make some sense when you think about who's succeeded there how good you have to be off the tee, the 17th coming into play as a par three. There's a, there's a lot of corollaries there that are pretty interesting. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. The, the Minwoo, uh, I know a Tuesday morning range session with a guy is not like, you're not going to get a lot of fact and truth or whatever, 
but he sold me on himself. He's like, yeah, I love hitting. I love hitting, you know, these tight little low draws. And oh yeah, by the way, there's like six or seven dog leg lefts. And like, I'm just going to hit two iron everywhere. And I'm long. And I was just like, mini, mini, mini. Oh, there it is. So who's that? Joe, Joe McD underscore golf. It's so good. It's so funny. Is that Bay Hill? <laughs> it is such Seriously? a good, like, that's such a good Photoshop job. Like, the Bay is, like, it's, like, reflective. Like, it's such a good, great Photoshop job. It, 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 it truly is. And it makes, it gives, it actually gives, it's funny, but it also gives good perspective on, what is that, 18 and 1, basically? Uh... What's the hole? What's what's the hole that's running like the top left of that picture? Do we know? Uh, well, the, is the coast on the left of this photo? Yeah. Okay. So the houses are at the bottom. Okay. So that has to be okay. No. Well, seventeen. That's the corner of sixteen green directly to the left of the pond. Seventeen's the par three that goes towards the houses there, right? And then eighteen's back up top on the left. Am I oriented correctly? I think that's right. No, Mate. no, it's not. The, he used the wall. This is three. This is three, four, five. That hole that runs on the water on the left hand side of the water is three. He used the wall okay. as the boundary. Yeah, right? bottom is three. Yeah, bottom is three. He used that wall, the boundary wall of the internal OB to be that lake. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Rick, what is um, uh what's the carry from the like straight T to green on three uh, map that I tell you it's probably i was wondering this patrick i, I was I, because I, I was i watched golf digest as a really good uh every hole um montage right. and i was looking at three and i was like yeah if you get the if you get a like the right wind there straight it, it, straight it's not on. crazy uh, front of the green 386 that's oh. crazy on oh, that no. line, on that line, you have to carry it 358 to carry the <laughs> downwind. What was the what was the uh, 13 at uh, or not 13, but whatever hole that Rory and Fleetwood drove at like 405 last week at the Scottish Open? Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, the uh, yeah, and the other thing is, I'm going from the back of the back tee box, so maybe right. they, you know. I don't know if there's a tee box they can move it up to if they would want to, but you could. Problem problem is I don't know that you're going to get that win this week. It doesn't look like maybe Sunday. I don't know which way it's going to be blowing out of, but other than that, it, it seems like kind of tepid when it comes to the wind. Tepid is not a way I would describe the opinions of one Rory McIlroy, who would close the gap on a nine-year major championship drought patrick with a victory at a place it's not the last major he's won but in the same year right here in 2014 and just like saint andrews uh feels like everything's pointing in his direction the only way this thing ends the storybook ending is rory mcquarrie wins the open championship unfortunately i have read this story before and it did not end that way well, don't spoil it for me because I have not <laughs> as a part of this team and 100% that's all I'm going to say to you guys. I'm dressed like this because I was a keynote speaker at the Roy McIlroy Anonymous meeting this morning. <laughs> uh, they were in a disarray. Hi, my name Wait, is well, Patrick. I'm a Roy well, McIlroy. <laughs> what were they in disarray about? What was the what was they the don't, who they don't know what to do with him winning the Scottish <laughs> Open last week? Is it good? Is it bad? Uh, like I think it is so stupid when people are Here like, we go. Oh, he won last week. He can't win this week now. I think that is the stupidest argument. Didn't Rick ever. say this on Sunday? Yeah. No, 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 he didn't. Rick he, if I did it, if, if I did, it was tongue in cheek. I thought he said something like, uh, I wanted to pick him yeah. Ne yeah, next did. week, but, but, but you're yeah, now he won. Yeah. Yeah. That was a joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> Golf yeah. is the only sport in the world <laughs> in which the guy who was the best it's, is penalized for it. It's preposterous. <laughs> if, yeah, if, it's if, 
if if uh you know i don't know a rod hits seven homers in a week on the eighth day they're not like well he definitely isn't gonna hit one now well but the 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 take on this is is less about it's more about i think what everybody's speaking to seriously is like the luck involved with winning a tournament right to where you're you're essentially insinuating well the luck it takes to win one tournament is not going to be there the next week to win the next tournament. Right. Yeah. And there's just, there's not a ton of precedent of guys going back to back in this sport just because of the nature of it. And there's not a lot of guys that would be good enough to overcome any luck that would be against them. But luckily our guy, I think nine years ago went back to back to back (laughs) That summer, a- so... AAU national championship. <laughs> <laughs> back to back to back. Eight. Tom Amansky's AAU crime, three crime dog with that <laughs> just perched ever so gently on top. I'm never the the video or the 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 shot of them the guy throwing from center field into, into the, the trash can into the barrel I, at I home play all day every day. I think about it's. That. It's incredible. It's an incredible throw. <laughs> They're turning two, and I'm like, I want to, I want to do that. I want crime to do that. dog, baby. Yeah, sorry, Patrick. You can't say back to back to back and not get a Tom Amansky uh, defensive skills video reference. That's over my head. I'll be honest. Yeah, you're with you. probably too young. Honestly. Too young. Yeah. yeah. We'll send you the video later. <laughs> I hate being on the outside of jokes. <laughs> Luckily. We're not on the outside of the Rory McIlroy train this week. And look, I think everything's just working in his direction. Tita Green was, I know he only won by one and he needed those two birdies at the end last week, but those middle two rounds from Tita Green were about as easy of golf I've seen him play in a while. Um, So you you get a, a, a wet golf course, you know, that's always been a Rory McIlroy bread and butter thing. Wind might not be up as high as some would like. That's also been kind of a Rory McRoy thing. So I think it's setting up great for him mentally, physically, emotionally, psychologically. You could add another adjective in there. Um, spiritually. And, and spiritually. Well, Patrick, do your, you wrote about Rory this week, and I thought it was – you and I kind of went back and forth on this. I thought it was super interesting, and I'm curious about – People should go read it on CBSSports.com, but I'm curious about your take on him not talking on on Tuesday morning when he was scheduled to talk. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're still hashing out some of the details of that article. Uh, me and the bigwigs. Oh, it's not up yet. It's not, not live yet. <laughs> it is not live yet. I Teaser saw alert. it was. Well, I saw it was filed. I didn't. I guess I <laughs> just presumed that it was it was live. Well, whenever yeah. it does go live. Yeah, there, there's some. Uh, give and take uh, in, in the sure. in the newsroom right now. In the, in the editing bay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I, I love it. I think especially at major championships, there are a lot of big media, not, not necessarily the corrupt golf media, but big media there who are just covering <laughs> the event, who are asking questions that Rory McIlroy or some of these guys have already answered. Like Brooks Kepka repeated himself five to seven times today. John Rahm got a lot of the questions that people probably wanted to ask Rory McIlroy. Um, and, and so I, I think it's smart. Like you, you don't need that distraction. You can go talk to Todd Lewis on Golf Channel or Sky Sports, wh- whoever you want to talk to. Becky Quick at CNBC, take a page out of Yasser and Jay's book. I don't really care. Just get your softball questions out of the way. Focus on the golf, focus on the major championship at hand and win number five. Do you think Becky Quick ever envisioned being mentioned on this many golf podcasts? In, I wonder if she's, she knows yet. Do you think she knows? She has to, has to. Somebody had to have uh, had, had enough connections there. Listen, I, I think that I, I love, I'll, I'll throw the premise of your take out there, which is like, People need to just chill about. Oh, here's what Rory needs to do to win his fifth. Like this is what this is what it'll take. I, I loved that premise for a column because it's 
it's funny you go to these tournaments and like the talk at night especially when rory's in it is like well if he does this then this will you know and it's fun to talk about it's also exhausting like it's tiring for him it's tiring for everybody involved i think everybody wants him to to get back on the you know major winning line so badly that it's like Everybody just needs to take a deep breath. I, the thing I was thinking about uh, with his press conference was I think he's done a really good job of balancing the tension between um, – because he did that interview with Todd Lewis, Patrick, and he said, I play my best golf when I'm carefree. And he doesn't m- mean like when I'm just rolling out of bed and playing, right, because – I think it I think actually at LACC he did such a great job of of strategizing and hitting the right shots and changing speeds in a way that maybe we haven't seen from him in the past. So he doesn't he doesn't literally mean like I don't care about anything, but he has to balance the carefree attitude with that strategy part and that's a really difficult line to walk not just for him but for anybody who's a really great player and uh yeah, because you don't want to overthink it, and you don't want to underthink it. It's just it's very difficult. But he seems like he's kind of in that space right now, and I'm interested to see if he can he can stay there throughout the entire week. Because Rick, the thing that I was thinking about with him is it's it's very difficult to win majors that far apart because usually guys either win all their majors when they're older, right? Like Phil. Or when they're younger, because you, you like this is a longer explanation, but I think that happens for a reason. It's very difficult to evolve as a person and to continue to win major championships because your thinking has changed, your emotions have changed. Like you either win them in one camp or the other, and to do it that far apart, Tiger's done it. Very few people, Jack did it. Very few people have done that. I think it would be a, a pretty cool career achievement for him. I thought he did such a nice job of the week, uh, the whole week of the U S open and doing his practice rounds early by himself and just keeping everything in perspective and not doing any media and all that fun stuff. I think he's trying it again. I think it's a good idea and we'll see. He's got all the tools. I I, I equated it to one person who's over there to me um, going to the grocery store where like I I know that I can't buy the Oreos because I'll just eat them all at home. (laughs) And Rory knows that he can't accept the presser because he's going to be honest about every single question that he gets. And it's going to be exhausting and get, and get him into trouble, not into trouble, but like, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's going to be like 300 articles about what this one quote that Rory said. It's an admission of his inability to lie in a press conference. Is is him turning down the press conference? Basically, do you think that he's in a he's living in a liar liar situation where he just has to tell the truth? <laughs> I mean, I think that's just who he is. Like, I, I think he can't he can't help himself. Like, even he was asked a question at the Scottish Open about live, and he like you can almost see it happening as he's talking. He like can't help but be honest because that's just who he's always been and so i don't i mean it's it's not great when you're the last guy to win at royal liverpool and you just won last week i there's an aspect of it that i understand why people are frustrated but i don't know man like he has talked a lot over the last 18 months and i think it's i think it's fine like i think it's i'm i'm good with it We're going to continue this conversation. We've got a lot more to talk about. We've got our best bets. We've got our one and done. We've got groupings. We've got storylines, et cetera, et cetera. We will continue after a quick word from our partners. Get breaking news. Big news coming out of the NFL today. Highlights and instant reactions. The largest final round comeback in four championship history. We're down to the final four. I just want to take time to analyze greatness. Shock winners and losers with a guy who's already a big winner. CBS Sports HQ. It's all sports all day long. And we're back. Let's talk about the Live Boys. Patrick, we've got a handful 
of favorites uh, in this event. Cam Smith, short odds. Brooks Kepka, both shorter than 20 to 1. Dustin Johnson's name is in the mix. And Brooksy catches a tee time with Hideki and Cantlay. There, there's a there's a lot going on for the uh, the boys from LIV. I, I love how the biggest mental alpha the game has seen in the last decade uh, can't can't withstand slow play. I like I like the idea of. Brooks Kepka donning a Superman outfit and his kryptonite is Patrick Cantlay. <laughs> Him just licking his lips, Cantlay. <laughs> <laughs> just, just you know, put picking up his feet and putting them down. Pick it up, put it down. Did, you, it up, did you guys see uh, uh, that's like, that? Him doing that is infuriating. <laughs> did you see Hideki's stretches on the driving range today? Yeah, the the Japanese Open Championship Twitter account. Was yeah, all over it. That was not safe for work. I thought I was on a wrong, a, the wrong website for a moment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I did not see. It. Oh, I'm, I'm watching right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the me- mechanic has some catching up to do. I think getting those hip flexors ready. It was. It was between that and Scotty saying he's going to take his pants off on the open <laughs> video. <laughs> It's like let's was, reel back the access point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm I'm good on <laughs> I mean honestly this was a, I forgot who had this take. Maybe it was me cuz it's idiotic, but we were talking at one of the majors earlier this year like the majors should be like one day of media and 6 days of golf instead of 3 days of media and 4 days. Of, like the, the it, I'm like let's let's get the show on the road. Like we need to play some golf. Yeah, there's a lot of lead up to these, but uh, sorry, try to get, I'll try to get us back on on track here, Patrick. You know, uh, DJ, I think you have already kind of alluded to being, you know, one of your one of your boys for this week. Yeah, I think a lot of the live boys could be uh, right there come Sunday. DJ, absolutely playing some great golf, great driver, the golf ball. He made nothing at Los Angeles Country Club and that second hole where he made a quad one day bogey the other couple days outside of that he was brilliant cam smith i think is really the very interesting one of the bunch yeah. and sometimes you just gotta take these guys for their word and at his presser at augusta national he was like pretty much i enjoyed my time off i hung out with my friends i went to australia i fished i drank and my game's not where it should be. Fast forward two months, and he's saying he's now a better player than he was this time last year. Uh, he said his main weakness, you know, he admits the driver's always going to be a bit scratchy. But his long iron play, he, he said he didn't love where it was in 2022. He thinks from five iron up, he's a much better player. So if he can keep the ball on the face of the earth, I think it's not a big if, but it's, it's definitely relevant especially the way he drove it at uh, the Centurion Club. It, it was not that good, especially down the stretch. I think he shot like eight under one day, hitting only nine greens in regulation. Um, so if he can keep it on the face of the map, the rest of the game's obviously fantastic. Uh, and then Brooks Kepka, we, we said it on Sunday. If, every time he tees it up at a major championship, there's more history that is on the line. And then I, I love Bryson this week. I, I really do. I think mentally, physically, uh, maybe maybe not as many adjectives as our boy Rory McIlroy, <laughs> but he, he's right there behind him, I think. And seeing Bryson trying to figure out the Open Championship and the wind and all the variables for the artist formerly known as the mad scientist before he was known as the big one. Uh, it, I, I think it's awesome. I love watching Bryson DeChambeau play golf. I've, uh, I've literally never heard him called the big one. Really? What about the book? No, no. no. What would you call him during his face? I, I, I just, the thick, know, thick boy. I call him the big one or uh, my dad, instead of the whole mm. call him the bulk. He, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing you could do. Uh, I I've got all four of those guys in my, in my top 12 in my player rankings, Rick, all four of them. uh, Bryson's played great at the the last two matches. DJ's 
playing better than he was at the beginning of the year. Obviously, Brooks is Brooks. And then Cam, Cam's, I'm fascinated by him because he was awesome at Oak Hill and at a place that you wouldn't, it was a little backdoor, but he was, he was good at a place that you wouldn't have thought he would be good. And then you would maybe expect it a little bit more at LACC, fair, wider fairways, more creativity. But this week, we've been talking about really good drivers thriving, and he's not a really good driver. But I, I, I you know, unless he hits a couple of balls OB off the tee, which is, I mean, you all saw the, the player championship that he won. There was that shot he hit on 16 on Sunday was like, oh my gosh, like, that's a, that's a, hook that i hit right well actually we already talked about this i don't hit that hook. I, just, I just started i just started on that line and it goes it goes there your, your uh, shot was his second into 18 that found the water just straight yes left. yes just <laughs> just like that uh but it was a horrible horrible drive so i'm concerned about i think he can win this tournament i get a little concerned about whether the driver gets crooked off the tee. And I don't know if that's a concern that you share, Rick, but that was just kind of my thought on, on Cam Smith coming into the week. Well, well I mean, what? His, his players win and his Open Championship win were sp- essentially two historic short game weeks. I mean, he gained like mm-hmm. 11 strokes in the short game categories at, uh, at the players and something similar at the Open. So that's the way he's going to have to do it. I, I do worry that, yeah, he gets a little loose off the tee. Those bigger numbers – come into play we kind of talked about it like there's a lot of full stroke penalties for missing with with the driver um so that worries me but he's he has shown us the path to the top otherwise bryson's kind of interesting so i'm, I'm i think dj and brooks are gonna have a great week um yeah uh, bryson's kind of interesting because while i like i would be buying i'll buy the next six months of stock on bryson i will i i, I see the trajectory i like where this is going yep but has he ever solved an open championship? Has he, has he ever solved this? Yeah. So last year, the lowest of lows T eight at the old cool course, the lowest of course, lows the old course is like the best course on the road for him. What do you mean? The lowest of lows? I mean, he, he was horrible last year in terms of golf. Yeah. I think he started to find it around this time last year, a little bit. But I mean, I mean, you could have said the same thing. I mean, I hate to bring up TPC Sawgrass again, but he did kind of hand that thing to Justin Thomas in 21, where he topped a ball on three or something with a hybrid. <laughs> no, that, that wasn't was a top. That wasn't a top. He that was because his equipment can't handle a spin rate or whatever he said afterwards. Oh, okay, that's true. But uh, he, I, I, I think, think he said it got a little spinny. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a lot spinny. Yeah, I hate when that happens. But I, I think that. What I lean on for Bryson is he easily could have just won at Valderrama, which is, you know, a golf course. You really got to think your way around. You can't hit driver everywhere. And he he showed the ability to kind of rein it in off the tee and lean on other aspects of his game. So, yes, the wind and all the other variables might make his brain explode. For, for all I know, he might be a you know a chicken with his head cut off out there just running around. Uh, but the conditions look somewhat benign, and it's a, a wet golf course. It might be kind of sea ball, hit ball, and I, I think that could you know pose well for him. Yeah, he, he's playing a little bit of a different game, Rick. I think the argument for him is he's playing a little different game than he was for a handful of those opens, right? It, it's – it's kind of back to he referenced what uh, 17 Bryson or 18 Bryson at the PGA this year where he was like, yeah, I'm trying to be be that guy again. Now, he didn't have success in the open in 2017 or 18 either. So, you know, I don't I don't know if that uh, if that even matters. I think the thing that concerns me about him, I'm in on Bryson this week. I think he's going to drive it well and have a good week. The thing that concerns me is these are small greens and he, his approach play can get kind of wonky sometimes, even if he's driving it well. Um, he, when he has these kind of weird in between shots with the long clubs, with the long wedges, it just, it can, it can get a little strange when he, like you think about wing foot and he had some short shots, but they were, they were almost fuller shots because they were out of the rough. He could just kind of, 
mash it everywhere. It almost worked to his advantage in a strange way. And sometimes when you have to be a little, have a little touch, be a little creative into, into small greens, I think he struggles with that. So I, I'm, he's another guy that I'm really interested to see play, play golf this week. Yeah, I think he's like one of the guys I'm yeah very much tuned into for this week. He goes out uh, with Siwoo Kim and Cam Young. Uh, for the first two days. All right, we're going to do one who, more. Who wins that that three ball? I'm a big Cam Young guy. This Can we week. touch on Cam Young? Did you guys watch that video I sent you guys last night? Yeah. The, mm-hmm. the recap of the first round yeah. where I Zach did. Johnson asked him to play a practice round he was tomorrow. Like, he was like, I'll uh, get back to you on that. But, but it was like, <laughs> he was like, are you healthy? And he's like, oh, yeah. Uh, relatively, you know, relatively, for this time of year. What is he, like Kirk Cousins week 11? Like, what do you mean relatively? I didn't healthy. like. I didn't like that. I heard that. I didn't. He, I remember the scene. I didn't. I don't know that I heard him say that. It because he took a real long pause and he then he went relatively. He went yeah, and he went relatively for this time of year or something like. And he's you know he talks real quiet anyway. And ZJ yeah. jumping all over him or whatever, but you know, it, I was <laughs> ZJ would <laughs> it, like just as if I was a play, if I was a player and he was my captain, I would be like, dude, just just pump, chill. Pump the <laughs> I'm 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 I like the way Cam Young sets up for this. Though he he his stat profile like he foreshadows a lot, and we've seen him go through slumps and come out of it. He's the timing's perfect right now. I did not like hearing that. Patrick when I heard that last night yeah I just I started watching the new quarterbacks thing on Netflix how is that it's pretty good I I found myself liking Kirk Cousins more okay one of the episodes is like you kind of find out how hurt Kirk Cousins was during the year just he was like number one in like QB hits and it it just reminded me of that I was like is this guy just getting (laughs) <laughs> wrapped up by Aaron Donald all week that he can't play a practice round with Zach Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was weird because they then they said like wins he said like Wednesday would be better. Or, I don't know. The whole thing was like kind of bizarre. But he was like, yeah, it was it was. So ZJ was such a pick me. He was like, when he when Z, uh, Cam Young was like, when do you when do you want to play? And ZJ was like, whenever you want. When I, I'm available, I'm available for you. Whenever I can get out, I can go out early, I can go out late, I can go out whatever. It's just like, all right, but chill. Yeah, just 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 <laughs> one back. Up. Go text Tiger about the parents. One one more storyline. There's a lot we can't get to. Ball. One more storyline. Do you want to, guys want to do first guys looking for their first major? Do you want to do Scotty Scheffler or do you want to do something else? Um, I, I think. Can we kind of a quick touch on the the first timers potentially? Sure. Uh, more. Well, dunk- can, can I add to that? Just like guys that we touch on the stars a lot. Maybe some guys that are tier two that we think are going to play well this week and do that like along with with first time winner. Okay. So the question I wanted to pose, I guess tier two guys involved would be uh, kind of like Dumb and Dumber, Greg. Greg asked this after the U.S. Open with Xander Shoffley and Patrick Cantlay, where we have we have seen Xander Shoffley play himself into at least weekend contention. It, it didn't go well at LACC, as opposed to Patrick Cantlay, who is becoming you know the bouncer at the back door right now. And Greg <laughs> asked the question, you know, what is going to be what? Which is more difficult? Is it more difficult for Cantlay? to play himself into contention. The one time we kind of saw him do that, he threw up all over himself the last couple holes at Augusta National in 19. Or is it going to be more difficult for Xander to get over that hump in contention? And uh, I'd love to hear what you guys think. I think it's always more difficult to get over the hump. Um, the, The difference people's perception of the difference between like fifth and first is that it's a small gap. And oftentimes it is not like it's a, it's a lot. And I think the difference between fifth and 15th, like what, what can't lay is, has been to me, that's a shorter gap than, than the difference between fifth and winning. And, uh, both, I mean, I don't know which guy frustrates me more though. Right. Because, they're both – it's like I, – I actually want to defend Xander. I think he wins more than 
I, I think we've gone too far on him. Like people, people are like, oh, never wins. You're like, he actually wins a lot. Like his his winning percentage is, I bet, better than people who follow this closely would think that it is. Cantlay, uh, I don't know, man. Like, what are we doing? His, the numbers are astounding. He's got every tool, and he just won't uh, get, like get into the mix at a major. Just at least Xander's like kind of been there, you know. And can't like and that. That just is like I, I don't know. I don't, infuriating is the wrong word, but I kind of you kind of want to see something. He's not twenty two years old. I, I've heard people, not me. I've heard people describe <laughs> Patrick Kelly as soft. Who are those people, Rick? People are saying, not me. <laughs> not me. <laughs> I got to make sure that wasn't me. <laughs> but people, people are, and it's like, it's it's the same thing, right? He's going to open with a 75 and he's going to finish T11. I hate it. I he's play. had He's had two holes of meaningful back nine major championship golf in his career and he's made bogey on both of them. Well, yeah. I mean, that's sort of, that, that's sort of the... Like, I don't even care about the bogeys. I just want you to get in it a little bit more. People are critical of guys like, uh, well, people are critical of Rory. And it's like, man, he's like been in it, right? So you think about the old course, you think about LACC, like he's in it. And there's a difference in like, you have to feel that a little bit. You have to feel what it's like to be in it because it's so different. It's so, it's like a different sport. And I just think can't like not getting in the mix is like it's such a waste. That that's that's like the first skill. The first winning is a skill. Getting into the mix is a skill. And if you're in the mix, you know sometimes it shakes you right, sometimes it doesn't. But yeah, you got to be in it. It's like you can't win from the sideline, man. Yeah, I agree. That that's. Uh... I thought Greg, when he posed that question, it was a great one. Yeah, it is. It's really interesting. Uh, one of the guys from that next year that I think is interesting again is Wyndham Clark, who oh, totally. is having a phenomenal year, continues to play well. And when Michael Kim was tweeting, he was like, oh, this place reminds me off the team. Michael Kim did two Twitter threads. Of oh, so nine good. Nine, nine, so good. And he said, you know, this reminds me a lot off the tee of uh, Wells Fargo and LACC. Um, okay. I know a guy who's won at both of those places this year. So his name's Wyndham Clark. It's pretty interesting because Clark hits that big fade. Yeah. And then someone who he was competing against in both those championships, Xander Shoffley hits a draw. Uh, so that that's the first thing that came to my mind. It was like, yeah, Wyndham Clark won it, but there's different ways to get it done. Obviously, and Million Wyndham weeks. Clark struck the ball great last week at the Scottish Open. Couldn't really buy a putt at least the first three days, so I I, I like it. But is Wyndham Clark going to? Here's a question. Well, that I know I'm about to be the biggest hypocrite in the world. <laughs> <laughs> is Wyndham Clark going to win like another back-to-back major championships? <laughs> Wyndham Clark. If Wyndham Clark wins this week, is he he has to be the player of the year. Oh, yeah. We, yes. Like, listen, here's the guys that have done it. Actually, do you guys want to guess who's done it? Because I was who's staring at who's done what? U- U.S. Open Open Championship in the same year. Tiger. No. Really? This Arnie. list is this list is insane. No. Jack. How many are there? No. Four. Four, Four guys, guys have well, ever done US it. Open and the Open in the same year. It is not Arnie. It is not Jack. It is not Tiger. No, none of them. Watson. Yes, 1982. He was the last guy to do it. Oh, God. I was oh, was man. <laughs> uh, um, Jones. Yeah, he was the first, 1926. Sarah. Right, Rick, you got it. Yes, he was the second, 1932. And then uh, Gary Player. You probably won't. I mean, you if we sat here long enough, you'd get it. The, the third one is Lee Trevino. He did it in 1971. So... Is that list going to be Jones, Sarazen, Trevino, Watson, and Clark? <laughs> I, maybe, but I, I'm, I, I'm dubious. 
Now, another interesting one, five guys have won the Open and the PGA in the same year, which is what Brooks is trying to do. Hagen, Price, uh, excuse me, Walter Hagen, Nick Price, Tiger, Padraig Harrington, and Rory. Three of those five, their Open win was at Hoylake. Oh, interesting. Which is super interesting. Now, it means nothing, but it's just like an interesting nugget going into, uh, into the week. Uh, I had one more thing I wanted to follow up with there, but I do not remember what it was. Who's the most likely guy to get his first major championship this week? It's, it's Sander or Victor, right? I mean, Victor's oh. been in the last couple of majors or two of the last three, of the last four, basically. Um, everybody else who, I mean, I get Ricky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there we go. Now we're talking. Is that the answer you were looking for? <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I don't. <laughs> Fleetwood's interesting. I, I think, I think Hovland. <laughs> no, you're out. I mean, I, well, again, is the guy's first win going to be the Open? Well, listen, maybe. <laughs> I think, who could, who could say? Could say? <laughs> I think, I think to his credit, if you want to compare him to, to Cantlay, he's been in it. Like he's been in majors now, yeah, yeah. not as many as maybe his reputation would suggest that he's been in, but he's, I mean, he was in it at Port rush. Mostly he's, he's kind of been in the mix, which I think matters. Uh, I, I think Hovland's the answer. And the reason I think that is, He's figured out major champ. May, may, Brooks is Brooks has like been the the leader on this. Like major championships are different, right? Like they're ju- it's a different thing altogether. And I don't care that Victor hasn't played well since the Memorial, or he, he's played fine. Like he's been just okay since the Memorial. He's been awesome at the Open. I think at T twelve and at T four is that right, Rick? Something like that. Correct. And. He just is like he is a major championship player. Like he just is. And I think that great driver, like all the stuff that we've mentioned, you there's not uh, there's not a lot of like issues with short game stuff around this place. Like there's not a ton of mess that he can get himself in. It's not tight wise, it's not necessarily uphill chip. I mean, it, it's yeah. It kind of sets up well for him, and and the issues that the issues that exist for him exist for everybody, right? Like if you're just up against the wall of a pot bunker, like everybody's screwed. It doesn't matter how good your short game is, right? Like that exists for everybody else as well. So it, totally. it levels it a little bit. I, I, I was watching. Uh, Tylus had like a little walk along with Cam Smith in his practice round, and he was doing like around the green work, and he like threw some balls down. He's like, I love during practice rounds how. Some of these guys are going to make divots with the 60 degree, but 99% of people are just putting from here, which I think only bodes well for Victor Hovland. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what he did at St. Andrews, right? I mean, he he putted everything off the green. Yeah. Justin Ray had a stat about how much better his around the green stats are at the open compared to everywhere else, which some of that around the green stuff has been put to bed anyway, right? Like, I think that he's we talked about this was it at it's not nothing, but he's gotten a lot better at it. Right. Oak Hill is where Oak Hill is where he hit bunker shots that I've never seen him hit before, which were like really spin. He, these really spinny, they would bounce like three times and slam on the brakes, which is not a shot he had ever before that. Yeah. 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 So I think it's, I think it's Hovland, Ricky, Xander, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Fleetwood. I would put Fleetwood ahead of Cantlay. I'm sorry. I'd agree with that too. Apology accepted. Uh, we are going to continue with our best bets and our one and done selections. But first, we're going to take a quick break and hear a word from our partners. When you're the FedEx Cup champion, your name's on this trophy forever. This is our season-long race. This is the sought-after trophy when we tee it up the first event of the season that you think about. Three tournaments with the world's best golfers battling for the tour's toughest trophy to win, the FedEx Cup. The playoffs begin August 12th on CBS. And we're back. 
time for the bets where we take 100 bones over to Caesar Sportsbook. We put 50 on a matchup, 30 on a finishing position, and 10 each on two separate outrights. Josh, reveal the board. There it is, 151st Open Championship. Let's start with our matchups. And Patrick, let's start with yours. Tony Finau, minus 105 over Matt Fitzpatrick. Finau has made the top 30 in all six of his open starts. Matt Fitzpatrick is just trying to finish inside the top 30. His words, not mine. I, I think Tony Finau could be in for a great week. I know it's been pretty ugly since the Mexico Open. I like the setup for him. He finished third at Portrush. You know, really wet week that week as well. When you pan out, T to green metrics are great. So give me Finau minus 105 over the Englishman. Mm. I went with Corcon, Corey Connors over Ryan Fox. I just think keep it in play off the tee. That's what Corey Connors does. Second shot's been great. And the putter has been respectable. Worth it. My matchup. KP. My, my six-year-old picked Corey Connors in the first round of our family draft last night. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's high. That's high on Corey Connors. We can... Uh... <laughs> He's an agent of chaos anyway, but we can we can have uh, producer Josh pull up the, the draft at the end. You guys can evaluate it. I've got uh, Siwoo shaking that ass over Russell Henley. Siwoo shook that ass to a T6 finish uh, last year at St. Andrews. Russell Henley, as good as he's been uh, throughout this year, uh, he doesn't play opens well. Like he do, his, his open record is bad. And uh, I yeah, I like Siwoo plus money over him. So he was a great driver too. Can be. Uh, he's going to, well, then it's, then it's Bryson Siwoo and Cam Young, just absolutely rock and driver uh, around Royal Liverpool finishing position. Anyone that we want. I I, I went for it. Yeah. I, I heard Minnie and I heard everything he said. And I said, okay, give me Min Woo Lee top 20. I fell for it, Patrick. I'm not, a, I'm not afraid to say it. I went with Min Woo. We've all been there. I thought about it myself and, Look, a great, a great start at the Players' Championship. I was tracking him last week on Sunday. I was hoping to get a few extra dollars for the one and done. He had like five birdie putts inside 10 feet he missed, so he's a great putter typically. Um, and, and I, I kind of bought into the hype as well with Bryson DeChambeau, uh, plus 220 for a top 20. I, I just think he's going to be in store for a great week. Uh, I think he has a potential to contend again. And so at top 20, I get a little, little room for air. Uh, Minwoo winning would become the first brother sister to win major championships. Cause Minji's That's got cool. two. Should be pretty. Yeah. Simple. She won what pine needles. And uh, I just, I just closed it out. Something else. Uh, I, you know, it's interesting. I, I jumped onto our little doc, shared document to put my pick in and I saw your pick Rick. And I was like, Ooh, I wish I had that one. I almost went back and changed my, but I felt like that was a little, a little disingenuous. But I went with Shane Lowry, top twenty. He's finished in the top twenty each of his last three starts, including the U.S. Open. He's finished in the top twenty-one each of his last three Open starts, including winning in twenty nineteen. So, I like him at uh, plus one forty to to do it again this week. Pine needles and uh, the Evian is what Minji won. So there that's. Minwoo, top 20. Shane Lowry, top 20. Bryson DeChambeau, top 20. Outrights. <laughs> I took Rory and Cam Young. I, I, just sure. involved in, I just want to be involved in the Rory situation. And Cam Young at 65 to 1 was just too long, much too long. So well, if, you don't, if you don't think that uh, Patrick and I are involved in the Rory situation, then wait till our best bets because <laughs> uh, we are – Emotionally, financially, when's the group meeting next week for this, Patrick? <laughs> oh gosh, I, I guess it'd have to be. Well, it, it depends what happens Sunday evening. Potential to be pushed back to Tuesday morning, uh, but but possibly good. Sunday night. Yeah, possibly <laughs> if it's, if Sunday it's not. Night as well. I, I'm I'm in business casual right now. If we're celebrating <laughs> Sunday night, I might be black talks for for all we know. Or you might just be the the Scheffler clip from the locker room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, uh, I'm, I'll go pant pantsless for this show on Sunday. Uh, I've got uh, very you brave pantsless right now for all we know. <laughs> I was gonna say very brave to to go pantsless on a on a chest up show here. Uh, I've got I've got 
Victor, the biggest thing working against Victor is I don't know. I can envision somebody coming down 18 in that sweater that he's going to wear, having beaten Scotty Scheffler, Brooks, Becca, Rory McElroy, and John Rahm. So I I posted that and I said here's here's Victor's uh, you know fit for Sunday and everyone has such hot takes about his fit that no one even realized that I photoshopped the claret jug into it. Uh, along the way <laughs> and like it was all this i was like you guys have missed it here man yeah. like everyone was like should be white pants can't wear those pants are they really sure i was like yeah that's not, not the claret jug in here that's so it's, good it's brilliant because you know the only one who doesn't have to look at it victor hovland <laughs> There you go. Look, nobody noticed. They're just like, well, why is he gonna wear black pants and black belt and a blue sweater? It's it's I, I'm I think I'm with Patrick in that it's so bad it's actually good. It looks like a gender reveal, the sweater does. <laughs> so he takes that off to reveal the pink shirt. Oh, that's that's a sweater. I yeah. thought that was the back of a quarter zip. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Because he always has the quarter zip where the Jay uh, Lindeberg thing logos on the back as well. Yeah. That's, well, maybe it is. Who 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 can uh, say? Honestly, yeah, it's it's pretty good. I mean, I I liked one of them. I like the the white ones with all the designs on them. He looks like uh, like an ice cream man or something. I uh, I I stole that that gender reveal joke from somebody on Twitter. I saw it. I thought it was I thought it was hilarious. But I've got uh, I've got Hovland, and then I've got. I've got Thomas Fleetwood, another well-dressed chap for the uh, for the open win at, at twenty-eight to one. Yeah, that both of those would be would be pretty sick, Patrick. You've yeah, got, that'd be awesome. You've got Victor Hovland as well. Yep, and then DJ. I, I think uh, I think he's playing great golf. He's striking the ball great. You have to have a sense of I don't really care. <laughs> when it comes to the open championship, you're going to get bad breaks. Your ball is going to be up against the lip of a bunker. Um, you might blast one OB on a par five late on the back nine on Sunday and lose to a hundred year old guy at Royal St. George's. You just got to brush it off and move on to the next shot. Dustin Johnson can do that. So I, I think number three is in the crosshairs. A hundred. A hundred year old. Shout out, Dar shout out, Darren Clark. I think he was like forty. <laughs> Same thing. To which, which, yeah, basically, that's what I was gonna say. Which is, which is no different to young Pat over there. I'm, I, I'm actually surprised that DJ is gonna end his career without winning the Grand Slam. Probably. He seems like the. I mean, it just works everywhere. His mindset's perfect. Like he seemed, he he, was, he had. He, I mean, he was healthy except for one week. He, he was what? He was healthy except for one week of his career when he fell down the stairs. Well, yeah, and the the jet ski. Yeah, yeah he took oh, some yeah. time oh, away. That's okay, that's true. Yeah, but <laughs> otherwise, I mean, he's been like a top fifteen player for twenty years. You think that? Yeah, you think that. He and he's had it. real shots at all four oh, of them, right? You the, think about what's hard breaks. Whistling Straits, uh, Chambers, which obviously ended up winning the U.S. Open the next year. And then uh, <clears throat> Royal St. George's. I, that's been the closest he's been to an Open, though. And you would he played well here in 14, but you would have thought that he would have come closer to winning like at a St. Andrews or, or somewhere like that over the course of his career. Best bets where Josh gives us an extra 50 bucks and we put it on anything that we want. I... Went with Wyndham Clark, top 30, even money, because I'm a sane person, and you two lunatics found the same bet. Who wants to, who wants to go who wants to go first? I just wanted to be all in. That was that was the only reason. I, I mean, I'm already emotionally and mentally all in, but now I'm financially all in as well. Rory McElroy to win for both of you, Patrick. I thought about Scotty Scheffler top 10, but I wanted a sure thing. So I went with Rory McElroy <laughs> to win at seven to one. It would put me back in the black as well. The train is leaving the station Thursday around three local time. Obviously we're dressed the part here. Uh, so I I'm not, I'm not too sure how this one doesn't hit to be honest with you. The models mentally, physically, emotionally, I want to. I want a number on winning by a certain amount: three, four, five, six. I'll. I'll. 
I'll I'll give you Rory wins by six or on any amount that you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bo- I'll book that action. <laughs> sure. I'm going to be screaming at the TV when he pulls iron on 18 instead of driver. Uh, I'm just... he's, up, he's up five and he pulls iron on 18. I'm really excited to either be the Rory whisperer. I can have that title go two for two. Yeah. Or just also. That would be cool. Be in, be down in the dumps with you guys. I, I think it would be a real bonding experience for us all. For the show, I hope if he doesn't win, he just misses the cut. I, I can't, do, I can't do another like seventy first hole. He's in it, runner up thing. I can't. Well, he, I, I feel a little out of, um, and this is sort of what Patrick was getting at. But like, what else is there to, to say about it? You know, like it's. It's sort of like, yeah, it, it's time to it's time to, to do the thing, and I th- I think he for sure will. But if he doesn't, yeah, that w- that would be it. Would be like, what if what if what if say uh, Brooks beats him by one at the end? It'd be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> like we got to do another nine months of this. I can't. I can't. I I either if if you just told me now he's not going to win, I would root for him to miss the cut. Okay, so you would rather him? Yes. I kind of one, I go kind full of port rush that. on us. Yes. First hole. Yes. Miss the cut. Battle. I would rather him do like, exactly what he did at Port Rush, right? Like shoot like five over on Thursday, then shoot like a sixty-six and miss the cut on the number, and I would at least five, and, five over on Thursday would be such a just killjoy. It would be brutal. I just can't. I can't do the whole thing. I can't do the LACC thing again. <laughs> I can't. I love. I, can't I love. Do, that. I can't do St. Andrews. I can't. This, this is my favorite thing. <laughs> we make. We make the Rory experience about our about yeah. our emotions. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's going through just normal stuff. I'm like well, under over here. For sure. Welcome to the club, Patrick. This is what it's all about, baby. P- people who are watching this are like, all right, I need to see an open preview. Let's see what the <laughs> CBS Sports one's all about. They're gonna think you guys are insane well we are Rick's but like my, on the brink of tears like i just i can't do it anymore guys my my favorite thing my favorite bit going on twitter is uh fellow G- what are you gen z patrick oh no no don't put me there i think i'm technically on the fence but put me in the millennials oh well i'm gonna put you in gen fellow gen z or claire <laughs> rogers <laughs> Uh, always does this thing like congratulations to Rory and all the golf Twitter men that are in their thirties on his success this week. <laughs> it's true. It's, it is. True. You guys honestly, like it's so good. It's you guys so get a, funny. You guys get a lot of crap, but you guys are ride or die or we are ride. <laughs> yeah, yeah, die. yeah, yeah. We are, there we we go. are foxhole type people. We're honestly, the only thing I could compare it to is kind of Justine Reed. And Patrick Reed. I mean, she is ride or die for her guy. She's always on Twitter mixing it up. And that's what that's what it feels like this week for us. So come on, you know, buckle that chin strap. We got to go to work. I did not wake up and envision a, a, a comp to Justine Reed for myself today. It's a good one, though. It's a good never, one. Never know where this pod's going to take you. One final thing to do, gentlemen. It's the one and done. Three million dollars on the line. Our leader and our guy in dead last have taken the same golfer, and one of them is here with us. That's you, Kyle Porter, to reveal that selection. Yeah, uh, Cameron Smith, defending champion Cameron Smith. Mm-hmm. It's my last chance to pick him this week or this season because he won't be playing any other uh, PGA Tour events official OWGR events throughout the rest of uh, this season. So, you know, do I really think he's going to win? Not really, but I think he's going to play well enough that it makes the pick worthwhile. Uh, Patrick, you and the fans, along with Sia Najad, have found the same golfer. You guys are spread out amongst the standings. Who have you chosen? Don't love the look of this. Uh, Dustin Johnson. Mm. I thought a lot of people would go with, cam smith so i try to outmaneuver them and went with the even more popular guy dustin johnson so 
uh, me and Kyle are losing ground uh, from the uh, from the Peloton. I don't know if you guys have been watching the Tour de France, but the Peloton is up, and we are here right now, and we're about to hit some some heavy incline. And I, I'm not sure I like the look of this mountain. Who's the favorite to win the the TDF? Oh, um, the TDF. <laughs> is that what they call it? Um, sure. Is it going on right now? I think it's this guy named uh, Jonas. He won it last year. Just, uh, yes. Uh, he's from Denmark. Jonas Vingegaard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ving Ving Vingegaard. Vingegaard. He's Plus on. Uh, Is he a beast? Is it? He's on Jumbo something. It actually looks like our friends uh, in Vegas have this as a two horse race or a two bike race. Ingegard. <laughs> if one guy was using a horse, that would be that would be noteworthy. <laughs> Plus two hundred and Tadej Pogacar. Pogacar. Oh yeah. Plus two seventy five. Everybody else is fourteen to one or longer. So that guy won the two prior ones. Jonas won last year. He's on. Th- th- there's like a. I mean, there's a Netflix series on every sport these days. Um, and then I is read an he- article on the Wall Street Journal about Vout. Who's the Bo Jackson of the Tour de France? He's on Jumbo. He's on Jonas's team as well. It's Where's crazy the dynamic. Yeah, it's Jumbo something. Jumbo Where? Zaki? Jumbo Shrimp, uh, maybe? I, I, don't, I don't know that. Jumbo Visma? Yeah, there you go. Wearing a sweater, <laughs> reading the Wall Street Journal. That's such a cold <laughs> you are out of control. <laughs> sure. Greg has lone wolfed it with Victor Hovland. I. I did do the double, the double, Patrick. I said, don't do Cam Smith. Everybody's going to take Cam Smith. Then those who do Cam Smith, they're going to do Dustin Johnson. Go one step further. Jordan Spieth. And I get him by myself. And I'm not super thrilled about it, but I'm happy to have him by myself. Maybe conjure up a little Jordan Spieth magic. Kyle M has taken Tommy Fleetwood. How are we feeling about Spieth? Not good. No. I I don't know. I mean, he's so. I think Rick posted. Uh, what was it? He's the f- he he. There's only four guys that have been better than him at a specific tournament over the last what is it? Ten years? Fifteen years. Yeah. Rory Wells Fargo, Brooks PGA, Dustin Pebble, Brooks U.S. Open, Jordan Spieth at the Open. So that's really hard to go against, but he's trying his best to get us to go against it because he's been he's been bad like he it's we talked about it on sunday and i looked up i went deeper on it it's not good this is only the second time he's going to enter the open championship off of missed cuts the first time he's ever going to enter off two straight missed cuts did he he didn't play travelers or he missed the cut at travelers he didn't play he didn't play so U.S. Open and and Scottish, yeah, yeah, okay. I mean U.S. Open, he, he should thrive at right. Like a, the the uh, excuse me, not the U.S. Open in general, but at LACC, he should have. That should be a, a spot for him, and it was not. It was definitely not. What a In Scottish should have been like. Same where's thing. where's the magic? Yeah. He played he played well there last year. It's just not like good. It. All right. Get your get your alarms ready, get your coffee ready, get your naps in. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, round by round recaps. We will have those when final putts drop and or coverage ends. We'll keep an eye out for that. Yes, Josh. More more uh, more likely that JT or Spieth misses the cut. JT. JT's lost. Show us does the Zach, does Show Zach Johnson. Oh, uh, don't. Well, no, let's not. Well, I don't okay. want to do this right now. <laughs> Porter draft. Porter draft. Show us the Porter. We've, we've got a different group for that. So Hannah with the number one overall pick goes Scotty Scheffler. Nice. Sadie. Enters. How did you? You, you takes these backsies. You let Rory. Well, let Rory. it it was a 
And it was a mess. We almost we almost had to go to family counseling over this. Uh, Jude, Sadie, Sadie's three. She doesn't know what's going on. Jude really well, she, wanted. Oh, uh, so she gave up Rory. Well, she, Jude really wanted Rory, and Hannah talked Sadie into her picking Rory so that Jude would be mad. <laughs> and mom and dad had to intervene, and so Sadie picked Wyndham Clark, and Jude got Rory. I, I mean, you could put an asterisk on Jude's uh, lineup right about now it, it, <laughs> under protest. Uh, Mark, a Mark special. Yeah. yeah. Ricky goes fourth overall to mom. Yep. Rom falls to the fifth pick. You love. We didn't, even, we didn't even talk about Rom today. How I'm, are we feeling? I feel good. Yeah. Yeah. I got no problems. I. <laughs> Uh, my uh, my temperature's uh, cold enough where I have to wear the sweater right now on on, on John Rom for two reasons. We haven't seen him in a while. Last one was the miscut at the Travelers Championship, which he just did not want to be at. And the driving numbers really have been great since the Masters. You throw in, I mean, he was asked about the oil protest which I thought was hilarious. Hell yeah. And they're like, they're like, what, what would you do if the oil protesters interrupted your play? And he was like, well, you know, I, I kind of have a reputation. So hopefully they don't want to bother someone like me. What is his reputation? A little bit of a hothead on the golf it's course. A menace. Yeah, but he's so, never actually like physically hurt anyone. Yet. It sounds like a threat. Just a broad <laughs> threat. Um, so I, I don't know. He hasn't been great in, in the open championship outside, I think 21. So I, I wonder if it, it does have to deal, do with something with the patience level. Um, but I don't think I've ever said this before. I think, I think team dad has, has, has got this. Yeah. Ron, well, Brooks, Fleetwood more in the fourth Bryson in the fifth. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I, it's I this is the first time I've ever been I've ever been on Team Dad. It might be Vince Carter. We uh we know who has but, the Data Golf subscription of this family. Pat, Jack, yeah, I know. Jack, Jack snags Connors. Is this a snake draft? So did he go? Yeah, Connors, yeah, okay. yeah. Connors in the first. Oh, it's sick. He he's a, he's in just an eight. I mean, look at that collection of look at that five some Connors, Hovland, Sung Jay, Jason Day, and Chris Kirk. By the way, Patrick's told us like nine different reasons that he's wearing that sweater. So I don't, <laughs> I don't really know what to believe. It's like a running bit. I love it. I love it. Uh, okay, so you like my team, Patrick? Who do you like? I believe I'm gonna go upside here. I think Mama Porter has a shot here. I, okay. I kind of like I like the makeup of the team. Good team. That's Fowler, Spieth, Finau, Adam Scott, DJ. Jude's team is good, but I cannot, under good conscience, uh, advocate for a team that you know the first round selection was a bit was a bit wishy washy. Yeah, there was some mis there was some crookedness crookedness going on there. I don't know. I don't think I can be a part of that. Yeah, there might be an asterisk next to the the pint of ice yes. cream yes. if he wins. Yes, he gets a point, but 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 Sadie gets to choose the flavor. <laughs> also, go. I mean, Hannah's is pretty strong too. If if Cantlay shows something, yeah, yeah. That's, well, that's, that's a Kentler Cantlay hat and Hideki fits. It's not bad. I kind of like Hideki's interesting this week. Yeah, just no buzz. What is he like? A hundred and eighty? He was as long as a hundred. I think he's been bet down a bit. Yeah. That's that's really hot. I mean, I looked back at his Masters one in twenty one. He was it was kind of the same going into that. Just he was okay, but nothing special. And he's yeah. he's I mean he can just turn it on, you know. And and you don't have to worry about putting as much here. It's I don't know. He is interesting. Hmm. All right. Well, Thursday, Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Open Championship will be contested. We'll be back after each and every round. Big thanks, producer Josh. Does all the hard work behind the scenes. Go and follow Patrick McDonald on Twitter at Amateur Status. Kyle Porter at Kyle Porter CBS. You can find me at Rick Run Good. This has been the first cut. We'll catch you next time.